It is nearly time for Melissa Bevent to start her conquest of the baronies of Avalon. Yet she must build up her war chest before she takes on such a task. While the baronies are certainly weaker now, they still have some allies and a number of very powerful kindred under their command. Yet so too does Melissa. And while these alliances have been strained, her court is now more loyal than ever, and she will do all she can to keep them that way, be it with the use of the various disciplines she's learned over the years, or by fear and dread alone. The Empress, first among equals Melissa Bevent, will rise to the challenge, and all of Italia shall rise with her. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Princes of Darkness, where we are trying to build up that war chest. The very first thing we have to look at today is a new perk that we have available under our melancholy tree here. Now, unfortunately, well, I was going to say we've got all that we can. No, we haven't. It's the Curse the Laurel that we're getting next. Move a stake away from your heart eventually removing it. Stress gain. Oh, so if we are put into torpor, perhaps we're able to um, help undo that. Wrath of the Martyr does sound fantastic. Armored Flesh, also good. And no doubt we'll be able to unlock some more of those. As far as our decisions go, right now we are trying to dominate Akos and we are still searching for Sybil, a fourth generation kindred that we are planning on tracking down. The Brood of Bevent have been seeking her out for quite some time. Ah, and here we go, the chance to dominate Akos. He is resisting, which, you know, makes sense here. Now, unfortunately, our chances aren't great, but we can increase those chances, of course, by doing our blood surge, and we want to be trying to improve our skill with numbers, boosting our stewardship up to 20. A considerable increase here. Now, let's see. Um, I mean, it's a, a little bit better. We're looking at 58% now, the chance that he will owe us a favor. Let's roll the dice, and... He resists our domination. Well, that is extra unfortunate. Um, yeah, it is going to be really quite difficult for us to try and track him down. He is unlanded currently. For us to invite him to court, it would be incredibly difficult. We could try to blackmail him, which, of course, we know about his murder. That would give us a strong hook. There is a 98% chance he agrees. Okay, let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's see if that works. Okay, we have a blackmail hook on him now, which is great. We could get him to pay us for that, or we could try to invite him to court using a hook. Fantastic. Now, because we know this, we theoretically should be able to imprison him. We're forcing him to come back to our court. Oh, oh, this is... This is very nice. Um, now, uh, in prison, obviously the chances here are not great. It's an act of tyranny. Okay, so we can't act immediately upon him. What if we were to try something else? I mean, a straight up diablorization. I mean, 95% chance of us succeeding. It is going to take 23 months for that to kind of pop off though. So he could do a considerable amount of damage in that time. There is also just a straight up murder plot that we can do here. 21 months. We are already known as a Diablerizer. I do think us consuming him would go down even better. So, yeah, I feel like we kind of have to try and go for it. And I am going to mark him. I'm going to pin him just so we can keep an eye on him. And Stefan has joined. We have agents in this. And I didn't realize we actually could have agents specifically in our chance to diablerize um we can convince some others increasing our chance by a significant amount katarina and jean franco here would they then know <laughs> we want to have a look and see who's actually going to be beneficial here jean franco we could use a bribe oh that's a considerable amount are you just a you're just a mortal really really but apparently we do actually have a hook, a perpetual hook, because you're in our herd. Well, okay, that makes it far, 
far easier. And uh, I'm assuming, yeah, we can do the same thing here as well. Katarina, fantastic. Oh yeah, all of our herd, we can convince to join just by making them join because they are a part of our herd. And then of course we do have some guests down here as well. We're probably not going to worry about them. Let's just see how this goes. See if it improves us. I mean, okay, they all joined. We're not really seeing a change there. 75% secrecy seems to be what we're getting here. We could say support schemes and see if that does make a difference. Uh, 95, 75. I mean, 95 is the max. So I think we'll just stick with what we got for now. And um, yeah. Oh, we're actually getting a minus right now. I think because we are a lion. <laughs> Diplomatic scheme power, okay. But our uh, diaporizing resistance goes up, okay, all right, but not our actual chance. So maybe we do want to do a little bit of shape shifting here. We could gain some dread with our feral weapons. We could go for the eyes of the beast. I think eyes of the beast for now should do just fine. We could have a look at some other animal forms, see if they do give us any uh, benefits there. Uh, an insect gives us a chance to discover schemes. And kind of the same thing with bats as well. It's a lot of resistance. Mist form can help us as well, but no, I think we'll just kind of stay as we are there. Oh, and the great liar is here, our vassal, champion, and friend. And we have a poem here dedicated to Melissa. Fantastic. We could put it on display, it would cost us, or we could just thank our friend, saying that we'll keep the poem close and I think yeah we will oh and some more scripts written about Melissa okay let's um see we'd lose some stress I think we can tell that this is truly heartfelt and the poem is lauded how wonderful oh and we do actually have this as a trinket it'll give us some more prestige and it's good for our glory hound vassals we don't really have any other trinkets right now so I feel like that's a good idea Oh, here we go. We're at this already. I have tracked Akos to his haven in Roma. All is ready. And now I can finally attack him to drain him of all his blood and even his very soul. The personal risk is considerable, but the rewards are greater. Shall I go through with this and launch my deadliest attack upon Akos? Oh yes, we most certainly will. There is a chance we become uh, hungrier and yes indeed... <laughs> We're starting to get there, but we should hopefully be fed here. Akos tries to use his powerful dominate powers to control me. I must resist, or I will be powerless to do anything. I must conjure all of my willpower to resist this intrusion on my mind. I don't want to imagine what will happen if I lose. There is a chance that we fail this here. It is a stewardship challenge yet again, and I feel like we're kind of already boosted as much as we can be. Yeah, long walks of the mind, minus two. But we have the stewardship surge that's up still as well. I feel like we have all of the mental protection that we're possibly going to be able to get here. I'm just checking under fortitude if there's anything different that we can do here. Prowess from pain, that's just for prowess. Our prowess is out of control right now. Yeah, I don't think even shape-shifting will help us here. We just have to try and go with it and see, see if we survive. Oh. Akos enters my mind, and I cannot resist his will. Really? Akos with 11 stewardship? <laughs> surprise, surprise. He compels me to stop, and then orders me, you have an important favor for me. He gets a weak hook, and we end our scheme. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The chances of us failing there were so, so slim. Now, of course, we can go about this the other way. Um... So, hooks and secrets. We have blackmailed him so far. Can we reveal it? We can expose it. It destroys all the hooks that we have on him. It would then give us the right to imprison him, or at the very least, it should. So, we will expose that secret. He is the killer of our child. And for that reason, we can imprison him. He will try to flee, though. Hmm. We've got a 0% chance to succeed. Our intrigue is fantastic. He's not a ruler, but his opinion is so low. I can understand him wanting to fight back, but the idea that he can just flee so easily, 
yeah, we completely lose our chance to imprison him. Now, we could just straight up murder him. That is also a possibility, and the chances of us succeeding here are relatively high. 95 and 70, I think we go with it, and let's see if he uh, chooses to flee, because I feel like that would be the smart decision, but he may still feel like he has some kind of hold on Missy, because he does, he does have a hook on her. As to how he chooses to use it, well, that is what we do not know. Waking the sleeper, here we go. This is something, I've learned as much as I can about the whereabouts of Sybil, the shunned daughter's body, currently in a state of torpor. I now know the general location, but I'll have to comb the province more thoroughly if I want to find her actual hiding place. Casentino. Okay, let's get started. We will make our journey. The brood of Bevent is going to be traveling there, and oh, oh, it is not far. Really? How intriguing. Just here, Casentino, there is a fourth generation kindred in Torpa. I'll be damned. Okay, so there are some dangers along the route. Yeah, there ain't much that we can really do to assist us with that. It's not mountains, really. It's just a few hills that are giving us some trouble. But we can have that reduced a little bit there. Yeah, we'll keep the mountaineer for now. We've got one danger and two medium chances of danger. Let's start traveling. Journey for a sleeper. Oh, Pex, you're a little injured there. It's time for the brood of Bevent to set off on this journey. So we're seeking out Sybil here, the shunned daughter. She's nearly 2,000 years old. Okay, you are a child of La Sombra. You're the sire of Duke Bukethos. <laughs> Montano is one of your siblings. Of course, of course. Okay, all right, we have to find her lair. Let us set off, let us see if we can be successful here. I mean... Yep, so so far, so good. Okay, now this is where the danger kind of starts to set in. And unfortunately, we are more than a little hungry. So, we've found where our target lies. But we also found an army of mercenaries protecting the place, apparently paid by a complex scheme run by some of the vampire's servants. So, we charge. Okay, there is a chance that nothing happens. There is a chance we get a critical success or we lose something along the way. Let's see. A messy victory. I am happy that it is a victory all the same. Okay, we shall push on. But I was going to say, perhaps before we do, we should try to um, have a feed. But alas, you know what? I think we probably still can. If we have a look at our herd specifically, we'll manipulate our herd here. Gianfranco, let's see. We could take a significant amount of blood from you. Oh, our hunger will not decrease. Well then, we don't happen to have anyone locked up, do we? No, <laughs> no we do not. And I don't really want to kill any of our herd. But then again, ah, desperate times call for desperate measures. And right now, Gianfranco, I know that we've called upon you before as a ally, but I think we may need to take all of our vessels, blood. Yeah. Intense is okay. We've got two with a cute, though. Let's do it. Okay, there we go. We have a better chance now, I, I think. Any obstacle in the way to your torpid target has been removed. Now you have to steel yourself for the confrontation with your prey. As recently awakened vampires aren't the friendliest of people, you have to choose what your goal with the sleeping monster is that awaits us. So, we can try to recruit them, or another soul to eat. Of course, Melissa is going to go for it. Oh, and uh, I don't know why, but uh, her face is covered in blood now. Um, so maybe that's a good sign here. There is only one obstacle in the way of your prey. A tough looking warrior protecting the sleeping vampire. They might be a ghoul, but they seem well trained. And we suspect that there are others that lay in ambush close by. The space is too close to launch an assault with an army, and we cannot go back now, or they will move the body of their master. So we must push on. So there is a chance that we are straight up killed here. It is a prowess challenge. So perhaps we do want to shapeshift here because more prowess is going to be better for us. So right now we're at 72. Let's see what we can do. Feral weapons will give us two prowess. We get four prowess from our lion form. So yeah, it, it is it is gonna be lion. Yeah, 
Let's go and shapeshift. We're at 76 prowess now. And that does increase our chances here. A 53% chance of a total victory. There is a chance we become wounded. And there is still that 12% chance that those fire arrows end Melissa's life. Okay, days pass. Do we succeed? I think we succeeded. Um, okay. I'm not sure what's going on there. It still hasn't concluded. Um, right. Yeah, let's lose some, uh, let's lose some stress there. Hello? The prize. Yes, we did it. Finally, your sleeping target is defenseless before you. You are almost shivering from anticipation, which is obviously not possible in your state. Time seems to sit still as you show your fangs, ready to consume the soul you fought for. Your beast is delighted, and you will leave this place stronger than you came, but perhaps less humane. And so, again, this is another La Sombra that we're consuming here. There is a small chance that we might get their, um, you know, abilities. We will see. We're going to get Sanguine Resonance no matter what here, and we'll also gain the fourth generation trait. A bloody victory. Oh, there we go. We are now an elder, effectively. At only 166 years old, Melissa, quite the achievement. Uh, we have some tempting fruit here. So we've seen this a few times already, um, and almost every single time it has been uh, a perfectly fine fruit to eat. But we're not going to take the chances. Um, <laughs> again, it's perfectly fine. Okay, well, should I be surprised? Okay, let's have a look then. I don't know if we unlocked anything else specifically there. It doesn't look like we did. And you know what? That's okay. We are now fourth generation. Yeah, our ghoul damage is very good. Um, we love to see it. And that does mean that going forwards, we are going to be able to get the final stages of these abilities here. So Perfect World, as soon as we get another Sanguine perk, we're going to be able to pick that up. This ability can be used as a character interaction that benefits our capital. It makes everyone in the city work towards making it your ideal city. Well, that's just fantastic. Now, we don't have a massive war chest yet. We are going to need to have a little bit more coin in there. Um, it is what it is. Let's lose some stress, even if it's going to take us a little bit longer to get back home. As yes, once we are back, well, let's see. I have had our court mentor here, Anna. I've had her trying to fabricate some claims. We have a claim on the county of Middlesex. No, I was hoping we might get a bigger claim. We are going to be going for conquest, and we're probably going to go for the Duchy of York. We'll see when we get there. Let's get back home and assess things first. And there we go. We have made it back. We have some traveler experience, which is fantastic. It looks like some wars have been ongoing. And yeah, let's finish the murder plot maybe before we go off in this great big war. And here we go. The time has come. My agents are in place. One of them will pay the assassin the very night the deed will happen. Another will ensure the wall is unguarded. A third will leave a subtle trail of candles to Akos's bedchamber. Everything is in place. Okay. A 95% chance he is killed. There is a 30% chance that it's discovered, though. Let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, Wayne. The Red Hand. Um, oh, okay. Thwarted? Okay, the last line of a old line of Welsh kings. A fine warrior. That you are. You are ambitious, you're diligent, you're stubborn. You could make a good, uh, a good kindred. Yeah, you know what? We will actually pull some strings to try and see if we can grab you. And <sighs> grave comprehension. My attempt on Akos' life has been thwarted. It turns out the foolish assassins didn't understand that he spoke didn't realize that they effectively shared the same language and were babbling about the scheme right in front of his nose. Really? Really? He will gain watchful uh, for two years. A new plan? Start a new scheme? Yeah, no, we are going to start a new scheme. <laughs> we're going to continue it. A competitor, of course. Oh, House Tremere. Okay. Hmm. Let's see, that would take most of our gold, or we could get you as a rival. Now, having a rival Tremere, not great. 
do we really want you? We do need more warriors, especially going into this war, but we also need gold. Hmm. You know what? Sure. Let's get a rifle. Now, theoretically, theoretically, we might be able to undo this, as long as it's a rival and not something more. Uh, we can challenge you for an artifact, which that's kind of fun. Um, hmm. Let's just see here. Mask of Empathy. Okay, we can break off this relation here. They will not be lovers anymore. I mean, we could, we could do that, but no. Alas. And if we were to try and uh, fight for an artifact, I don't think that's going to happen either. What's one more rival, eh? Now... Okay, Owain, let's have a look at embracing you, eh? Meanwhile, we have an inspired person who can be... Oh, you want to go on a, a journey to Southern Europe? How much will that cost? A considerable amount right now? We'll have to just sit on it. Now, while we are at war, we are not going to be suffering so much from the loss of um, income. It's not going to cost us as much to be at war. Um, oh, Right, well, the hook, the favor hook that he has on us has expired, that's nice. And we have a melancholy perk available, and there's a hunt, oh, now that's definitely tempting. Wrath of the Martyr. Improve the bonus from prowess from pain by increasing the power you draw from pain. Okay, sure, sure. Hmm, I mean, what can we say? It is a hunt. <sighs> I suppose we could go for it, couldn't we? Does give us a little bit more time. And it's not that far. We've been to this hunt a few times now. It, it can be fun. I think we're going to go for it. And we have arrived. Let's see how this goes. Ah, wonderful. Masha, thank you for the coin. And it looks like we are hunting a stag. Chances aren't great. Ah, dear. And the hunt fails. Well, it wasn't one led by us, so can we be surprised? No, but we did get some experience out of that, so that's something. Oh, and we can demand some new payments as well. Wonderful, 150 gold, all that. And we have a new stewardship perk that we can pick up. Now, it is my domain. May very well be worth us going for. I don't think we're going to go for mercenaries so much, but also... Fearful troops, men at arms, maintenance per dread. Our dread is rather high. I think we will go with that for now. No. Barad has been murdered. I, our child, gone just like this. Well then, killed by this baron here. Hmm. So, where exactly are you? Oh, you're within our territory. Hmm. I see. You're a chamberlain. Well, there's only a 6% chance that we succeed here at imprisoning. We go for it regardless. And of course, he has fled for now. But we will not forget you. No, we will keep track of you. And we will capture you yet. Yet another child gone. Our youngest as well. Thankfully though, we are about to embrace another. And interesting. All that glitters. My scourge, Duchess Viriga, approaches me with a wicked grin. My lady, this pouch contains a power most nefarious. If sprinkled on top of something, say a gift for Akos, it will leave no trace but will afflict whoever touches it with weakness and ill humors. Okay. Mm, I think our chances of success are high enough. We will continue on. Oh, okay. And now we have the embrace. Let's get it done. It's only a small amount of prestige that we're, or rather piety, that we're paying there. And we should have ourselves a new childer. And that we do. A fifth generation childer, no less. Owain, red hand. Wonderful. Wonderful. And that's a pretty good spread of stats, all things considered. We like to see that. And having a look at Alliance Power here. Okay. You are significantly strong. You have 11 champions to your name. Robin, the outlaw. Okay, whereabouts are you situated at the moment? Oh, oh, that's fantastic. You're in Wales. Well, I like that a lot. Okay, so let's see. Let's arrange a marriage here between Owen. We don't want it to be a grand wedding. But yeah, I think that will help. I mean, it's inferior to our numbers, sure, but those 11 champions can make all the difference. Excellent news. And with Owain, 
We shall go balanced. And it seems like for now, we may become rivals. We can't really afford to become isolated for a year, no. You know, I think we'll roll the dice here with the forgetful mind option as well. See if that helps. And yes, gained 50 opinion of us. Well, that's nice. And as for Faith, well, we are going to get a little bit more stress. And a breach of the masquerade. Well then, we could just make them forget, which that is fair. Or, well, we could drain them. And I think that's probably the route that we're going to go with here. A good choice, I would think. And our child is faithful. That's very good news. And now presenting him to wider society, he's distinctly average. And that's okay, my child. That is okay. Let's hope you last a little longer, Owen. Now, our stress is high, but it is time. It is time to march to war. The baronies of Avalon will quake when we land upon their shores. They have a lot going for them. 17 champions. We have 68 champions amongst all of our allies, and we shall be calling upon all of them. We're going to conquer a duchy, and we're going to go for the Duchy of York, because that contains West Riding. Hexham is within this region here. It is a start. It is a foothold. Let us declare war. It is time to raise the troops. What an army, Melissa. And let's go and call everyone else to war. Verpus, Robin, and... Oh, Giovanni, you're not going to, you're not going to join? Why? Why will you not accept? Because of your opinion of us? Let's see if we can rectify that. Oh yeah, you, you've kind of gone off us a little bit, huh? Okay, 150 gold is a considerable amount, but you will gain a significant amount of opinion. And I do think that that's going to be worth it. Yes, there we go. Let us call you to war. Because yeah, 3,000 troops and 29 champions. I like that. So we will be leaving Rome behind. And let's see. Let's land an East Riding, hey? Oh, and we can already see them starting to make a move. And we have Akos seeing the sun. Killing vampires is at its core quite easy. The sun will do it without fail every time. The tricky part is to actually make sure that the target is outside when God's rays of light bless this world. For this one, you've chosen the demolition method. No need to move the sleeping vampire if the roof itself is removed during the night. You only need some good men able to create a distraction in the haven so your crew of experts can get to work. What could go wrong? A classic, really. Let's see if we succeed. This could be a good omen for us. Oh no, sorry. Those are our allies here. Yes, of course. Sun, sun, sunproof? Akos, you son of a bitch. My plot was working perfectly well and the sun started burning my target. But even that was not enough. Using their tremendous physical powers, Akos just shoved off the rays of light long enough to run for cover. Soon the guards were back to help their liege and the whole thing was, at the end, a resounding failure. Unbelievable. I know he's 500, but my gosh, man. The resistance of this lad. I must try again. See, he's sailing with us right now. He is coming to war with us. We are going to keep this up. We're getting more and more dread each time we try this as well. So um, I'd say it's kind of working out for us. It is going to take us a while to sail there though. And our supplies unfortunately are going to be a little bit low once we arrive. A smarter move would be landing in our allies territory and going from there. But you know, here we are. <laughs> and of course our allies are actually going to be landing before us. So let's hope that that turns out Okay, they've started sieging down some of their territories. Okay, okay, we'll take that. And yeah, there will be a negative that we get from, you know, having recently landed here. But we'll try and make this quick if we can. Okay, and that's not even a location that we can siege. So I suppose we shall keep moving. Honestly, the best thing that we can do right now is probably push for their army. We're only looking at eight champions there. And for the rest of them, they will have to cross that river. Um, it's a considerable amount of casualties though, so hmm, maybe we just try and play it safe just for the moment until we capture more territory. Actually, you know, I don't think it matters where we go really, we are going to lose troops no matter what. 
Melissa is a forder, so 300 casualties really ain't all that bad, I gotta, th I gotta say. Oh, and it looks like everyone's gonna move in with us anyway, so I suppose we are starting this off with a bang and a hell of a battle. The Battle of Sherwood here. So the enemy commander, okay, I mean, you're not bad, your prowess is average. The Warlord of Avalon, okay. Oh, and we are absolutely demolishing them. As the rest of the troops show up here, this is very much in our favor. And I would love to see the after battle report of this one because um, that's got to be a significant victory for us. Yes, some of them did manage to make it away from that battle, but that's given us 50% already. Looking at the details here, we had 40 champions in that battle there. They killed over 900 and lost none of them. And I mean, the same thing with their champions. So I... So we're going to continue on down here. We're going to start sieging down the various territories. And I think we probably will station besiegers just so we can kind of speed up this process a little bit. It doesn't matter where we go. We are going to be losing troops though, unfortunately, because uh, we're kind of blocked off everywhere. You know what? We're just going to, we're going to wait for now. I know our supplies are down, but I think we can, we can manage the wait. And here we go. That's our first little bit of territory that's been taken. So we're going to go move in. Make sure that we get everyone together and we're going to have a look at moving up to the next territory. Looks like they are moving some of their troops around at the moment. At 69% at the moment. And I think what we're going to do here is station up our sieges and we're going to try and see if we can chase after this army here. Looks like we're going to catch them in the open field and see how we go. We've got the rest of our troops chasing behind and we're actually fighting against the enemy liege here, Lady Elizabeth, the Baroness of Avalon. And yeah, this is where things get tough. We are just at the absolute max of our stress. So, wrathful. I will show you who is all right. A prowess challenge against our good friend. Uh, we'd lose a considerable amount of stress. We don't want to lose a level of fame. I'd say we go for it. Uh, yes. Missy let off some steam and look at that we've got even more of our allies showing up here as um, I'm hoping we'll get some kind of prisoners out of this but it doesn't seem like it at least not so far looking at the details here again our champions are far out killing their own but she's been very lucky thus far that um, yeah there have been no commanders captured at this stage let's keep a close eye on our troops here this is quite a well protected castle we're not going to be able to siege that down very easily Let's just hold here for now. We've got some additional taxes, which is great. We're still in positive at the moment as far as our total gold. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that'll do it. That is enough territory captured at this stage. So we are going to enforce our demands here. So be it. We will disband the rest of our troops here and look at all this territory that is now ours. Now, having a look at West Riding. So this is Hexham, Hexham itself. We want to try and take control of this from a, the current vassal that's holding onto it here, Joanna. So it is a total act of tyranny for us to do that. We do have, in this case, maybe the ability to fabricate a hook. That could be one way to do it. Honestly, the tyranny might not be that bad. All subjects lose 26 opinion. It's not, I mean, it's not, it's not great. <laughs> At the end of the day, it is Hexham that we want to be holding, though. Oh, and how interesting. We can use Sense the Sin on her. I'm intrigued to see how that might go. We'd be using some piety here. Even with demonic powers, the barriers of ignorant fools raised to hold their own desires are hard to bring down. It's up to us to slip into Joanna's mind and liberate them. But first, we must break through. Okay, so the best chances we have right now is by rousing our own blood. Let's see if we can triumph. Okay, excellent. Another soul on my list. Amplified laziness. Okay, that's fun. I like that we can do that. Okay, now we can attempt to just revoke the title. Because we have a claim, we can do it without being viewed as a tyrant. She might accept. If she declines, she'll rise up in rebellion with other disgruntled vassals. Okay, that's all right. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to station our maniacs uh, over here in Lincoln, which is some territory that we've just gained. And then we're going to change the rally point here to Lincoln itself. And then, let's see. 
we will attempt to revoke the title. And who knows, this could actually end up being a rather large war. And that it is. We have a number of vassals that have risen up here. 4,000 with six champions. Let's rally the troops and let's see what this civil war looks like. So obviously there's territory over here, but back in Italia, yeah, there are a number of spots that have popped up here. Interesting. So I'm so I'm relatively confident that we are going to be able to quickly and effectively take down our enemy here. We'll see whether or not we are actually going to be able to do that. Now, unfortunately, some of our troops are still raising here. So, okay. <laughs> they gave us a moment longer, which I am happy to receive. There we go. The rest of them are starting to appear. Good. Now, all of our troops are together, or very nearly all together. Let's start marching. Now, there is a strong chance that they are going to take territory back here in Italia. They don't have great troops, though. So honestly, we could probably just try and call a few allies into this. Giovanni, let's go call you to war here. Now, as you, they are, actually, we can call all of our allies in here because this is a defensive war. Uh, we didn't start this war here. They just chose to not accept our terms. All right, I, unfortunately, we're not going to catch them before they manage to get away. But it's not going to take us very long to siege here at all. And there we go. We've captured a fair amount of territory. Shaja is dead. How? Mysterious circumstances. Is it anything to do with Akos, the snake that we've allowed back into our midst? Perhaps. I would certainly hope not. <sighs> I was so proud of her. She had done so many murders. <laughs> she had done so many murders. A fantastic amount. And yeah, we are going to have to figure out who did that. For now, Marco Polo, you will be replacing her. I know old Kent wants to be on the council, but no. Marco Polo, you shall take her place. Does Melissa feel loss here? Your child's learned language scheme was invalidated. Oh, Dante was trying to learn from her. I mean, it could honestly be our own child that are trying to pick each other off. I would not be surprised in the slightest. Spiteful acts. Well then... Antonio, how could you do such a thing? Um, hmm. A witty poem. Let's go with that. Popular? Yes. Okay, wonderful. That's caused him to lose some prestige. A sudden but expected betrayal. There is always a weak link in any vampire's haven. It might be that ghoul that wants to be embraced, or the servant that got beaten up one too many times, or even the guard that has doubts about serving a damned canite. If you can find that weak link, it will only be a matter of arranging for the vampire's coffin to see the light of day in the morning. You have several insights on your foe's court, and may use them to such an operation. Okay, come on. Come on. Okay. Let us try. Let us try. And successful. And we gained the trait murderer. <laughs> the scheme is known. A sudden but expected betrayal. A resounding success. Your inside man was never found before he cleverly dispatched the guards on an errand and made sure Akos was facing the morning sun. A simple plan, really, but sometimes those are quite enough. Unfortunately, the death throes of your target were heard quite far, and your man was captured before he could flee. You have been revealed as the brain behind the scheme. Akos is dead. Well, we are known as a murderer, but we are known as oh so many things. Now his childer may come after us, but that's just fun, isn't it? That's part of the challenge. We lose a lot of stress for all of that there, and we discovered banking. <laughs> I can't imagine those two things are, um, you know... <laughs> Uh, related in any way whatsoever. We did get one of his childer as a uh, an enemy there. Ah, such as it is. Now, okay, let's see. Where is the main... The main army is here. In Rome, trying to siege down Rome. Okay. So, let's go land right on them. Well, they're not sieging down Rome just yet. It is a place nearby. But we should be able to win this pretty quickly. A courtier between friends. I know just the place for him. So someone will join us. Okay, you're, you've got a fantastic amount of prowess there. 
Okay, my vassal Count Constanzo has honored me with a visit and has brought one of his courtiers along. He approaches me excitedly. Well met, first among equals, Melissa. It pleases me to see you thriving here in Roma. It occurred to me that Ilya here may be of service in your court. He is incredibly talented as a strategist. His mind is always spinning out possible tactics. I would make use of him myself, but alas, it does not seem possible. Um, sure, we can make use of uh, this slow deviant here. You do have a magnificent amount of uh, prowess there. We are going to be spending some prestige, but I'm okay with that. You're going to be quite the knight. Okay, let's see here. Maybe we want to try and land on the shore first and then go from here. We can recapture this territory just fine. Recently disembarked. I mean, their troops are of a terrible quality. I'm sure we can manage this just fine, and sure enough, we can. Oh, Lael the Stud, you decided to rise up. Oh, so be it. We'll make sure to uh, have this be a swift victory. And we managed to capture someone here. I see a Bruja. Well, I mean, we could, um, hmm. I mean, you're completely unlanded. I think, first of all, a little bit of torture goes a long way. Uh, for us to reduce our stress. And then there are other options that we can look at. First of all, ransoming 10 gold, that ain't much at all. Um, okay, we have no problem with beheading here. Diablery, on the other hand, we would end up losing some of our piety or spending some of our piety. Phlegmatic resonance, 500. I mean, it's not bad, but, you know, it's fleeting, so I don't think it's really worth it. Let's just go with a good old public execution. Ah, Tyler, a famous character in the world of darkness. The rebellion of what Tyler has been an annoyance for English canines, but it appears that the ripple effects are starting. One young Bruja, Patricia of Bolingbroke, has taken the name of the rebel and started rousing disillusioned young canites and other rabble. The fiery woman seems bent on bringing an end to tyrants, be they mortal or otherwise, as she has taken her first city and more are rallying at her side. Each passing night, the Lords of England have to choose on how to deal with her. Will it be the Velvet Glove or the Iron Fist? Another rebel doomed to failure, soon to be crushed, or we are on the same side. She could become our vassal. That is interesting, having Tyler on our side. I mean, she's of our belief system right now. We are on the same side, Tyler. Um, so let's see. Uh, you're right here in Derby. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> the rebel makes her move. What timing. Brilliant. Oh, and another Tyler. The, well, the Tyler, original Tyler. There is an aura of anticipation about the meeting between King Richard and Watt Tyler, both hosting a peace conference of sorts between the nobles and the peasants' revolt. Tyler has been the most stubborn of the rebel leaders, refusing any concessions made by the king thus far. You're pretty sure that many important Canaanite figures are gathering in the shadows of the meeting, especially around Tyler's lover, one Patricia, of Bolingbroke. As such, you are keen to send some of your own agents on site to make sure you don't fall behind your rival schemes. The only thing left to do is question the freedom of action of your agents. Will you send them with resource money or catch a prize from the event? So what are we going to do here? Gold is of no concern. I think we try and pull some strings. If we can get him, that would just be fantastic. It seems like we have so far, but is there any competition as of yet? No? Seemingly not. Okay, so what what we do then, we can arrange a marriage perhaps. Let's see here. Tyler. Hey, there we go. We'll make sure it's a matrilineal marriage. We'll not accept at all. Okay, weren't you lovers? Were you not lovers? Relationships zero. Really? Huh? Did that, did that just not, uh, not work? Well then, I think one of the main reasons is that he isn't kindred. Uh, currently, he could become kindred. Predators don't marry with cattle. I mean, yes, that that will that will do it. But come on now, we're not going to let that story end just like that, are we? No, of course not. Uh, let's see, an embrace. That will do, I think. Right now, let's see. The armies are on the move. Let's try and see if we can catch up with them and put down this uh, little rebellion. 
Oh, and that, that, that will do that there. The child and heir of our vassal, Joanna. So that will put an end to it. You are ninth generation. You believe in Mithras, but Mithras is no more. And so with that, we shall enforce our demands. So be it. We will disband our armies. And finally, Hexham is ours once again. Actually, no, it will be. You're, you're imprisoned now. So let's try that once more. We will revoke. Excellent. Just like so. There we have it. Hexham, Melissa, you are home. The development here is terrible. Hexham is effectively in ruins, but it is the ancestral home of her father and her mother. And now she's back here, finally. Now, for the rest of the territory that we have here, and honestly, even for Hexham, I think that she might entrust that to another. No, we've, we've got to hold on to Hexham. And and we will. But the other territories around here, we will be giving away. Let's have a look at Owain here. Yes, we are going to be granting that title to you. Uh, let's send that off there. And we actually do need to give away a little bit more territory for us to actually be able to, for us to be able to hang on to Hexham. So Palermo, we may want to give away as well. And having a look at our grand childer here, let's go by our sum of all skills. And ideally we go for folks who are currently unlanded or, you know, just not a ruler in general. And it looks like Setimo here is taking the cake. All right, congratulations. You're now a count or a leader. Yes. Oh, and uh, we should probably cover up that masquerade. I will be their god. They shall not expose my secrets. No, they shall not. And it does look like some prisoners here can be ransomed. But where's the fun in that? Actually, we've got a lot of prisoners here. Wow. Okay. 600, huh? I do wonder. It's probably worth us having a look at some of them here, because if we were to diabolize them, well, that's that's a considerable amount of resonance that we'd be getting. Again, just fleeting. I think we're going to go through, see if there is anyone that uh, is, you know, really got it going on. But I think for most kindred, it is just going to be fleeting. Oh, I mean, you're negligible. So I guess there's a chance we could have more. Oh, here we go. Okay, Catherine. Hmm, you are 11th generation here. That's a considerable amount of resonance that we're getting from you. I don't think we can say no to that. Acute resonance. No, no, no. We should keep you around. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so. Oh, you're landed. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? But you did rebel against us, so we theoretically could try to revoke that title. You are just a baroness after all. So, yeah, there we go just so. And we can herdify you. Another sheep joins my herd. Acute choleric resonance. Very nice. So you'll just be staying there, Catherine. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. And we've got more acute resonance here. Guyana. Okay. I think we can herdify yet another. We will be herdifying you. Thank you. Now the rest. I mean, Joanna, we can't, we can't really take a chance with you, can we? No. How big is your family here? I mean, a little bit, so perhaps we'll just do a straight-up diablery. Straight-up uh, a burning. Now, peacemaker here, perhaps it would make sense for us to make peace. Your grandfather is someone that we get along with quite well, so we will ransom you. We will do that. We probably should have blood-bonded you before we released you, but alas, here we are. Having a look at you, I think we'll probably, I probably will blood bond you before you leave. I think that's worth spending that piety, and then we'll send that off. We have another 50 here as well. We attend your hunts quite often, so I think we will just go ahead and accept that ransom. Same here as well. We're not going to have to blackmail every single one of them, or sorry, blood bond every single one. But I do think we will probably still do a few little burnings just to keep the stress down, you know? And one more burning. There we go. I'd say that's looking pretty good. And I think after that, yep, okay, we've just got those two in prison now. That's a lot of ransoms accepted. Things are looking good. <laughs> oh, now Tyler, 18 Marshall. Really, really nice. You are a powerful vassal, even though you have one small little bit of territory. 
picks, I do think it would be worthwhile us trying to see you in a different position if possible. Our court mentor here, Anna, is also quite good at what she does, but I think we could get Pex back into that position. So Pex, congratulations for now, we will make that swap. And then here, Patricia, congratulations. You are now the leader of our forces. And we'll probably need you to help us with the control situation over here in West Riding. And now we have to keep a very, very close eye on the wars going on here, because as soon as we can, we are going to want to declare war yet again. Oh, we are actually holding on to too many territories at the moment. We have the Barony of Bolton here as well that we've just claimed back. So, Martina Bevent, you? No, let's see. Umbertu. Okay, we're looking at the sum of all their skills here, but we may just want to try and go for stewardship for now. A great grandchild, Albano. <laughs> there you go. That's yours now. And because it's been quite a while, we are going to have a look at the Bevent family tree. Because, uh, yeah, it, it has indeed been a while. And so, looking down Peck's tree here, he does have three daughters here. Isabel Bevent is his uh, grandchild. Now, Missy only has two child who are currently alive. She is looking at making another now, but... I would love to figure out who killed Shajar. We could actually start trying to find secrets, couldn't we? Belial Bevent is the furthest down the tree here, as we can see. And I suppose, yeah, this would be the traditional line of, um, well, Gilam and the blood of Bevent. But as we know, it is much stronger down this end here because Melissa has gotten much stronger as she's been creating her child. Oh good, and we can properly usurp the Duchy of York now as well, which we will be doing. It's going to cost us to do it, but we want that Duchy. And here we have it, the embrace. Let us drain what, Tyler? Dry. An education now. Okay, we will be teaching you your place. Oh, and Johannes is here to give us some gold and, and to declare his loyalty. Very nice. And that is a new choleric perk for us as well. A slow child. Well, decreases learning by five? Um, gosh. Isolated for a year. No, unfortunately, you're going to be losing that learning, buddy. Now, lifestyle perks. Let's see what we have here. The Forger's Hammer. As a character interaction, it allows you to increase the prowess of a weapon artifact. Well, that's fun. Unfortunately, we don't have any weapon artifacts yet, but perhaps we will be able to in time. Let's see what we've got going on here. Ah, King Gulam of Burgundy has bestowed upon me a most gracious gift, a couple of well-bred palfreys, one mare and one stallion. My lady, my champion, Stefan, beckons me over to the mare. Look at these muscles and those hindquarters. This one would serve well in war. Okay, we could get some court grandeur. We could sell them, of course, here, or train them. Excellent. Yes, let us get a war horse. Wonderful. Fantastic. Our child is faithful. However, it's taken us a bit of stress to get him to that point. And now, oh, okay. We have the presentation. Shrouded failure. The politics never stop. Oh, Kent. Duke Stephen of Kent has a press claim on a Italia, the Empire. Well, our child really screwed up there. Oh, wow, he has a faction against us now to install him on the throne against us. We can't have that now, can we? Um, so, what do we want to try and do with you? You have been a bit of a problem for a, a while, haven't you? You are a old kindred. You've been around for a while. It won't be easy for us to pull one over on you. I think the first thing that we would need to try and do is fabricate a, a hook before anything else. So let's start that. And then we have a new perk here under Melancholy, Armoured Flesh. The perk will allow you to soak what could have been a killing blow in some circumstances. Nothing short of a lethal strike will kill you. No amount of wounds will ever end your life, but only complete destruction or decapitation. Sounds good. And I think that's just, yeah, that in general, it's bumped up our prowess even further. 82 prowess. I think we might be taking the cake here. So let's have a look at the entire world here. And we're going to sort by prowess. Oh, and we are, 
We're not even close. Okay, so let's see how we stack up then. So we have 82 prowess. That's decent. Uh, 83 over here. Well then, uh, Baba Yaga, an unknown. You lose. Yeah, that makes sense. She's over 6,000 years old. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. She's currently in torpor at the moment. She's the fourth generation Nosferatu, the little grandmother. Um, okay, the great enemy here. Also, you lose. We, we yeah, don't want to come up against Nurgle. Um, over over 8,000 years old. And then we have the Herald of Destruction here. Over 9,000 years old. Yet again, you lose. So I feel like we are actually tied. We're tied for the top prowess because obviously there are gods that walk among us here. Although you're also in torpor. How interesting. I do wonder what would happen if you were able to track down one of them, you know? Uh, it doesn't seem like it's really an option. Yeah, no. You're unlanded though. How interesting. I do wonder if we could potentially try to get a hook on you and get you to join us because my gosh, that would be fantastic. Um, cannot be fabricated on wandering characters, of course. Now we could try to beckon you. Abducting is one option. 24 isn't actually bad. We could send a gift to you to increase your opinion of us. I'm, I, I want to do that here. And I also want to make sure that we keep you pinned as well because um, yeah, if we somehow could get you invite you well that would just be fantastic your base reluctance oh we are close if we could have better lodgings well that might be something that we can do small lodgings let's go bump it up let's go all the way apply and see if we can well we can't really afford grand lodgings but um we'll attempt to <laughs> and there we go our child is done the education is complete and a roadside store. While traveling across the plains of Malta, I find a makeshift looking stall. Okay, there is a peasant there, Philomena. You have some artifacts. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, why, why not? We, we need it right now. Look, we're not, we're not, we're not a good person. Let's work off some stress while we're here. And we can also talk to a confidant, which unfortunately is going to make everyone else just like a little upset. Okay, and then let's have a look at you, Tyler. Okay, will this work out now? Yes, yes, it will. And I think we are going to keep this as a matrilineal marriage. Although, in saying that you are of our line. No, okay, all right. We'll keep it as is. You will be living with her. I think that's totally fine. Let us send that proposal. Okay, we're no longer overwhelmed with stress. Fantastic. And those two lovers are united once again in Derby. How about that? United in death. <laughs> oh, great. And there is a scheme to murder us. Let's see how bad. Okay. It's not great. It's not great. So, let's see. A few different things that we can do about that. First of all, we need to make sure that we are disrupting schemes. And then we are going to go and change into our mist form. Or, actually, you know what? Let's shapeshift. If we were to, we need to return to humanoid form first. Then if we were to change into a insect, the chances of us actually uncovering the scheme go up significantly. 30%, which I think that is the highest that we can possibly get. Yeah, insect it is. It's gonna drop our prowess down by a little bit here. Yeah, <laughs> let's turn into an insect. I should have actually looked to see what we would get from mist specifically, but I don't think the chances to discover it are as high. A 56% success chance is quite low, considering, you know, we failed with 95, like twice on Akos. Well then, how interesting. This is quite a look, I have to say. Um, it has come to my attention that the lawless fugitive, Glib, has been staying in your court. Hand them over to me to meet my justice. I will compensate you for your troubles. I think I would be okay with that. Glib. Let's see. Okay, you're a 10th generation Ravnoth. Okay. Well, sorry. Gonna be, gonna be sending you off. Bye. Oh, and it looks like we can actually successfully invite our friend to court here. Let's... Let's do that. Let's make that happen. You are now our champion as well, and a secret is exposed. Interesting. Has accused my vassal, Duke Bukefos, of having an affair. I mean, that's okay. I mean, good, good for you, I suppose. 
stir up some trouble in other courts. Okay, so we are definitely going to do some things with you in a moment. But first of all, let's see what we have here. Advanced Protean. Okay, that sounds good to me. It gives us more prowess in general. All right, I would love to be able to get down to mythic form. Ooh, several bygone forms. Transform into specific mythic creatures. That sounds great. We are still away from being able to get that though, unfortunately. Oh, I'm pouring over the ledgers. That detail may income from vassals. These numbers do not add up. The perverse leader, Andrik, has fooled me and been paying me too little. Hmm, we could take him as a friend. I wouldn't be against that because we also get payments from him. So I'm okay. We'll lower the feudal taxes, but then we are also going to be able to, you know, uh, bribe him easier because he's going to have some things. Now, okay, my scourge has come to me with grave news. She is certain that Count Count Valery Anu, my own grandchild, is scheming against me. <sighs> You're trying to kill me? Really? A 14th generation kindred. Our grandchild. Oh, I see. Brad. Well, okay. We will throw you in jail. We will throw you in jail, child, and... <laughs> Let's let's see. I mean, an execution here might not be a... It, it should be a bad idea. Um, close family members and spouses. Parents, grandparents, children, grandchildren. Um, so, parents, siblings, honestly, I'm okay with this, I think. Now, obviously, you are of our bloodline. You're a known criminal. Doesn't say anything about uncles and whatnot or hmm can't do public so no okay we'll be claiming that blood back thank you it was a gift after all ah would you look at that and we can demand our payments now wonderful looks like basarab is going to be a little bit short so we'll just let that kind of uh, stay for now and we can cover up the masquerade again so we shall Hmm, now it does look like we'll be able to pull off a little bit of a war up here. Lothian has kind of broken away recently. So we're going to raise up our troops and start to march on them. And we'll probably group up here first before we go into their territory. Let's see, they have risen their troops, but uh, they have not risen much. Oh yeah, that was over rather fast there. So we did pick up a few prisoners there. So let's just go and have a look and see what their blood is tasting like. Oh, intense, phlegmatic, no less. It's not acute by any means. Perhaps we'll just have a little feast. Hmm? Oh, and that's another phlegmatic perk at that. Well, that's nice. It looks like we might be able to do at least one ransom here. Let's do that. As for the other here, we could diabolize yet again. And honestly, we're on a roll. <laughs> no, let's wait. We have no stress right now. Let's let that build up for the moment and let's have a look at that perk so phlegmatic rewrite personality you can turn a vampire into an exact copy of you mentally each time you use the power found under the forgetful mind interaction the target becomes a bit like you oh how intriguing now it's kind of mean uh but i do wonder if that's something that melissa might want to do to pex slowly over time so, forgetful mind, options. Um, we don't really seem to have... Oh, that's opinions. Forgetful mind, opinions. Ah, uh, rewrite personality. So we need to have at least a few of these things here. Is your herd or ghoul thrall? Something that I definitely need to remember to do next time we're in combat is Fist of the Titans. Because it telekinetically attacks all of the knights that are under a kindred. Honestly, I'd be surprised if it wasn't under Mesmerize, so I think we might try Mesmerize here. Okay, and there we go. We have won that siege. Let's go and force our demands here. So be it. Just like that, we've gained more territory up here, which is fantastic. And now I think we'll try and split a little bit of that territory. So our Childer, we will go and grant some titles to him. These two provinces up here. There we go. You are now a leader in your own right. Oh dear, wow, okay, we have quite the ransom here. I think we could go with that. A hundred gold. Yeah, sure. And it looks like this big war that's going on within the Baronies of Avalon is still going on. 
I think it's only a year before we can attack again. Oh, and a schema has been discovered. You're plotting to kill me? How could you do this? The scheme has been abandoned. I'm not surprised. How could you do this? Challenge rival to a fight. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we are going to challenge you to a fight after that. Our child. Our own child. How then? Oh, I don't think he accepted <laughs> in the end. Ah, uh, fine. Ah, uh, and here we go. Dominating Pex here. Okay, we will exert our will. We can try and push that a little bit further as well if we are to blood surge and, of course, go for the numbers. Bit of a boost there. Excellent. And that's a 75% chance of success. Our willpower has been roused. Okay, command puppet is now an option that we should actually have with Pex. Yes, okay, so rewrite personality. Uh, okay, so... Let's spend some piety there. Uh, remove trait? Yes. We shall remove. Now, what do we want to try and remove from him? <sighs> fickle, maybe? Yeah, fickle for now. Ah, okay. And our fabrication here. It's an act of tyranny. Six opinion. Mm, it's not that bad. It is only a weak hook, however. <sighs> hmm... I think we could lose that tyranny over time. We we do have a uh, a problem with them in general, one that we are going to need to try and work against. And others are starting to join that, huh? Now I do think trying to use a hook to convert him could certainly help us start to see eye to eye. But he wants Italia. He has a claim on it now. I think we'll try. I think we will give it a shot. We will. We will. We will offer. We are using a hook there, so that will help our chances. Okay. All right here. Your faith is too strong, huh? Oh, okay. This will be us using our hook here. But he may continue to practice it in secret. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think you most certainly are going to be doing that. Now, if we do chuck you on the council, that could help with things a lot. And with 18 learning, I think we could make that work out okay. Um, but yes, oh, we have pecs. Yes, we have pecs. Okay, I, I think it might be time. I think it might be time to shift pecs off of the council. Alas, I think that time has finally come. And as for you, our friend, shall we offer you a gift? Honestly, I think that that will pay itself off in time. Pex loves us at the moment. So even though he's a powerful vassal, actually he's not considered a powerful vassal anymore. Well, that's okay. This... Makes that okay. <laughs> right, but yes, wars. Let's see. Only 53 days. The 20th of August, we will be able to launch yet another war against the Baronies of Avalon. Wonderful. Now, I think I would like to invite our new friend here, Nefer, into the brood of Bevent. I mean, to have another fourth generation kindred close to her, I think will mean a lot to Missy. And perhaps we may even be able to convert you to witchcraft along the way. Let's attempt it. Oh, and we have yet another choleric perk here. Lend the supernatural vigor. As a character interaction, it allows you to grant your prowess to the target. The kindred grants their incredible strength to another. I mean, that sounds like fun. Now, what if we were to do that? What if we were to do that to you? Lend supernatural vigor. Okay. Uh, shared prowess. Okay, 74 times for a year. Okay, we would become frenzied, however. Um, okay. I mean, if we were to consume blood really quickly afterwards, we'd have to, like, kill someone. We do have prisoners, so let's make this quick. Let's do that. We now really quickly need to move. Uh, I don't know if we can get higher than 83. I think that might be maxed out. We'll, we'll, we'll see about that in a moment. But prisoners. Oh no. We only have our two prisoners that are a part of our herd. That's a problem. We're about to frenzy. There ain't much that we can do about that. Apart from maybe kill someone else that is within our herd. So let's see. Basarab. Oh boy. Okay. Intense. Intense. Acute. And the rest is all acute. So maybe we do want to hold on to the acute uh, ones. And honestly, Basarab, you've been around for a while, but you have been a problem. So take all your vessels, blood. I mean, that's going to give us animal resonance as well. Sorry, buddy. It's got to happen. Basarab, farewell. Farewell. And that has given us another melancholy perk here. That's it. 
that's all that we can get along this one here. We're going to have to start trying to learn other abilities. Resilient Mind unlocks a new Fortitude character interaction. Your mind sheds derangement and animalistic quirks while becoming resilient to mind-altering powers. Sounds great. And it's going to make us even better at losing stress as well. So that is something that we actually have to choose, though. So if we go into Fortitude, we're going to go for Resilient Mind. You must have negative mental trait to use it. Oh, okay. Well, we're right for the moment then. Good. And we have an opening in our herd. Oh, Arianwe has left. Interesting. What happened there? Okay, well, Patricia, uh, welcome. You're spending prestige. That's fine. We'll take that. Okay, so we lost our gangrel primogen there. And, well, many other things. Oh, Patricia will be a perfect Bruja primogen. So, yes, we'll go and appoint you now. As for gangrel, ah, uh, Ilya, who is in actual fact a lover of Melissa now? Some things might have happened behind the scenes. So that's Svenik and Ilya. Now it's probably still worth us having a court physician, so Svenik, we are going to appoint you to that position there. An antiquarian will also be needed. However, hmm, okay, our new Nefer, the Fearless, is, well, okay at it. A Seneschal would be nice as well. We do have a lot of expenses right now, but we can't afford to do this. Hmm. Maybe we'll just wait. Ooh, an alliance. Well, I'm okay with that, Owen. Yes, we do need to try and improve our relationship with him over time, and we will, but we'll see how that goes. Oh, and Akos, we can probably take you off of that pinned list. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. We will try and find a way to bring you back. Fabricating a hook might be a good start. And we have a new convert. Fantastic. And you know what? Yeah, let's go and befriend you while we're at it. And we've just passed the 20th of August. There's still a massive war that's raging on here, but we are going to be declaring our own. And would you look at that? A holy war for the kingdom. The kingdom of England that we can claim in one big go. The kingdom of Scotland would be a, another war altogether. And we only can do this every 50 years. So it is time to make our move, Melissa. It's time to go to war. And we will be trying to pull everyone into this war if we can. Our three allies will be called upon. And our armies shall be raised. Oh, and there is a new goal. Okay. Lord Mark the Kind. My goal is still the same. Okay, so the last war that was just being fought is finished. So Oxford is now the heart of the kingdom. So we are going to have to fight our way on over towards him. Right now, he is really suffering. Um, we could just make a push straight towards the capital. And I think we'll do that with Melissa's forces. How many would we lose along the way? Only 151. Okay, that's not all that bad. So with the others, we're just going to start to push for other provinces that are kind of bordering our own and see how that goes. Let's have a close look. Okay, we're fine here. Let's keep on moving through. Melissa is starting to engage the enemy here. Wonderful, and it looks like we got a prisoner out of that as well. Excellent. We have some pretty serious um, stress issues at the moment, so let's just see what this would do for us. I mean, it would certainly satiate our hunger. I'm okay with that. Let's go do what we need to do, Melissa. Now here, we're probably just going to station the besiegers. Oh, actually, we need to have a lot of besiegers there, huh? Okay, so let's actually just keep everyone together for now. This army here, I think we're probably going to move up to join with our other army. Just because I'm a little bit nervous with some of the troops that we have wandering around on the map. Let's see. There we go. First siege done. Let's move on. Oxford is going rather well. And that's another stewardship perk that we picked up at the same time. 84%. Like to see it. Okay, so here we could go for detailed ledgers or we could go for it is my domain, which we are going to pick up now. I think that's going to be an important one for Missy because we're currently okay. Uh, we seize the cumin's skull. I like it. Do we want to put that uh, on display anywhere here? Looks like we can. There we go. Which is that something that we want to do right now? Well, we can't do it while we're in an army right now, so... We're just going to have to make this work. Let's move over to these troops here. Get them cleared off the battlefield if we can. And oh, that is a win. That is a win. That fight is over. 
Let's go and force our demands. That really did not take all that much. We will seize all territory within Lord Mark's realm that is part of the Kingdom of England. Uh, we do have a few people that will become our vassals because I think they are already of our faith. Yes, indeed, that is the case. Okay, well, that's not all that bad. Okay, let's enforce our demands and see how this plays out. Any moment now, he should accept our demands, accept defeat. And there we have it. There we have it. 36. My gosh, so be it. <laughs> Look at that. Dario. Dario pass? No. Pex, what happened? Slain in battle. Was that the battle that we were just taking part in now? No, I cannot believe that. She definitely didn't have one prowess before. Oh, no, no, she fought down here in her own territories. I see. What is going on here? Something. But look at that. Look at all of that. Well, it looks like we have some raiders here. We're not going to let them get away. So <laughs> let's take those raiders out and claim whatever goods that they have. Yeah, and make sure that they leave here. Befriending an evening's company. We're closer than ever. That's great. We've actually made a friend here as well. And someone is plotting to kill Stefan. We can't have that. No. And I think it's already been dropped. Oh, and end of war. Right, I see. There was an invalidated claim there somewhere. Let's just make sure that they actually leave these territories here. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're off. <laughs> it looks like they're going to be sieging some more, but that's fine. We're going to disband those troops here. And this is, uh, well, interesting, isn't it? New beginnings. New beginnings. Would you look at that? The corrupt vampire hierarchy is strangling any hope for the younger licks to do anything. If this is to change, there must be a revolution strong enough to endure the counterattack. You will confederate the free states into a powerful new political entity. A holy order of your faith will be founded. You will become the order's patron. You gain decentralized rule. You gain Canite free states. Yeah, the realm of Italia needs to be over 100 and we're at 104. A brand new future awaits. Um, I just want to have a look at some of these other things here as well. The red and white apple of Avalon. Upon the pinnacle of Glastonbury Tor are two springs, the white and the red, representing the forces of life and death. Near the two springs is a small apple tree that bears fruit year round, whether it is winter, summer or spring. Half of the apples are red, but the other half have skins as white as snow. Okay, I mean, yes, let's pick an apple um, before we do anything else. Oh, and we have it right here. The red apple of Avalon. Hostile scheme resistance. I will take that. Let's, yeah. New beginnings. Here we go. And a surprising turn of events. The corrupt rule of elders that has existed since the dawn of time has been challenged. You are not exactly sure yourself what the catalyst was or if the state of affairs will endure as long as your foes plot to crush your upstart rebellion. But in the wake of your fight against the princes of the night, many have gathered to join your cause. Some follow your lead, while others have begun to experiment with new political constructs. It is a strange new night indeed, as you find yourself in the position of a respected peacekeeper between the various factions coming to life. You are no old-fashioned ruler, but the solid rock that defends the free states from counterattacks and mortal interference. It is a precarious position of dubious honor, framed with dangers and threats at every edge. But, really, there is no other place you prefer to be right now. We boldly step into a new era. We have a holy order and now we have the Canite Free State. I feel like that's some fantastic marketing for Melissa here. First among equals. I mean, yes, I suppose so. In, in the belief system here. And we can extort our subjects uh, should we desire to do so. But... Look at that. Look at all of this. The Mediterranean and England. And yes, the baronies of Avalon still exist out there across Ireland and Scotland. But Melissa has started something important here. Oh, and she did all of this while in insect form. Let's maybe uh, transform back, huh? Returning to her humanoid form. Yes. <laughs> 
okay, she did not do that whole league as an insect. Oh, no, no, maybe she did. Maybe she did. She took over all of England as an insect. <laughs> that seems like something Melissa would do. And after all of this, after all the bloodshed, after all the killing, the Canite Free States are born. Born from a caitiff. One who did not belong. One that was told where her place in the night was. A small little island. A county, all for her own. But Melissa, she sought her home. And to reach that home, she needed power. She grasped it. And did all that she could to gain it. And in that process, she has lost oh so much of herself. When she first arrived here, she was a kindred of honour, gallantry, heroics. Yet the beast, the beast won out. And in the end, look what it has provided. A strong and loyal council. Believers in the defence. But as we know, Melissa is no hero. Melissa indeed is a tyrant. And should any challenge her rule, should any challenge her power, they will find fangs at their neck, or the kiss of the dawn light upon their undead flesh. Legionnaires, I would like to thank you all for joining me for this journey into the world of darkness, as we have reached the end of the tale of the Bevents for now. Perhaps we will see them again in the future in some form, but for now... I ask you all, if you have enjoyed this series, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.